Now, when we understand how critical SQL servers are for the businesses, it's good time to talk a little about performance and performance issues. This is because most of the SQL server problems in production uh, are performance related. So about 70% of performance issues in SQL Server are related to bad code. What I mean by bad code is, for example, uh, query logic not written in optimal way. Uh, it may be missing joins, Cartesian products, unoptimal joins, uh, different kind of uh, problems with, for example, using cursoring logic too much instead of temporary structures. It may be bad schema design on database level, and it may be also because of missing indexes, unused indexes, fragmented indexes, too many indexes, too few indexes, uh, fill factors are not optimal, and also if the instanceable configurations or database options are not optimal related to code that is running on the platform. Then the rest 30% of performance problems on SQL Server platform are because of poor capacity planning and infrastructure problems. With that, I mean, for example, the problems with network, problems with storage, not enough bandwidth, problems with CPU, not enough CPU, uh, uh, RAM is insufficient on instance level, on server level, so on. So, these kind of problems uh, that are more related to uh, that capacity plans are not that valid for the uh, current day situation. What is then needed to solve the 70-30 problem? So if the 70% of all performance problems are related to bad code, what we should do? We should use proper performance monitoring software to be able to analyze the bottlenecks, what is the root cause of them, and then we are able to fix those uh, bad code issues. So proper performance monitoring software uh, is uh, covering uh, areas such as monitoring for each SQL server, instance, database with a variety of different kind of performance counters. There exists tens and dozens of uh, different kinds of performance counters. I'm not going to uh, uh, list all of them here, but let's say that from 50 to 100 performance counter is, counters is, is valid number on all those levels in total. Then we should be able to do different kind of diagnostics and health checks for the uh, to check the health of SQL Server instance configurations, database options, and also, of course, the weight stats analysis, different kind of uh, indexing issues like uh, missing uh, unused indexes, fragmented indexes, things like that. And then we should be able to drill down from the actual monitoring into a, a, a blank assay of SQL Server queries and, and weight-based analysis of, of what is happening inside the, the queries as well. Those are the typical areas where we should be able to drill down into. And of course, um, not only being uh, reactive on monitoring, but also uh, looking to the future, how, how things are evolving over time. Then what comes into a capacity planning, because about 30% of all the issues in the performance are related to uh, poor capacity planning and infrastructure problems, uh, we should have uh, uh, ability to uh, see the consumption of the uh, hardware resources over time, how they are distributed and how they evolve. Then we should be able to plan a different kind of scenarios for new target environment, like right sizing the servers, uh, making server level consolidation, making instance level consolidation and so forth. And what is also important that those capacity planning functionalities should also cover in such software uh, the ability to uh, understand the difference between the source servers and target servers performance in terms of CPU utilization. 
so so called benchmark ratio between the source server and hypothetical target server in addition to this the software should understand the seasonal characteristics of the uh, servers and instances and databases over time and how they evolve over time so they should be also trend adjusted those result sets so the extrapolation in between the ratios of the benchmarks and the extrapolation of the trends against the seasonal time series should be taken in account then also advanced capacity planning software should utilize uh, mathematical advanced mathematics like uh, uh, machine learning to be able to uh, really fit your uh, platform or future platform in the uh, smallest possible footprint in terms of CPU, RAM utilization, storage utilization. And also it is important to have all the storage uh, in information uh, and st statistics for that in, in terms of databases and log files, like file sizes, um, the allocated used ones, then the uh, IOPS, latencies, uh, throughput, and things like that.